Number 60. The evaporation of one mole of water at 298 Kelvin has a standard free energy change of 8.58 kilojoules, and it's represented by this equation. And they say that the delta G notch was 8.58 kilojoules. Now here comes letter D. It says if the evaporation of water were always non-spontaneous at room temperature, wet laundry would never dry when placed outside. In order for laundry to dry, what must be the value of the partial pressure of H2O in the air? Okay, so the first thing is I'm just going to rewrite this formula, right, this balanced equation, just showing us the evaporation of water. Evaporation just means that you're turning a liquid into a gas. Now, we know that this is going to be non-spontaneous because they did give us a delta G value. So I'm also just going to write that out next here. So the standard delta G that they told us was 8.58 kilojoules. And I know that this is non-spontaneous because it's a positive value. Anytime that you see a delta G that's positive, that means that it's non-spontaneous. In other words, we need a external amount of energy to push this reaction forward. Therefore, when you're trying to boil pasta, right? Actually, you know, not boil pasta, but boil the water to make pasta. You don't just put the water on the stove and don't turn the stove on. You're never going to make that water boil. You need to actually turn the stove on. And that's the external amount of energy that we need to get this reaction to go. But now we're talking about laundry here, right? They're saying that if it's always non-spontaneous, what laundry would never dry. If we want that to dry, what must be that partial pressure? So when laundry is drying or when the laundry is done drying, what state do we want that water in? Well, if the water is still in a liquid form, all your clothes are going to be wet. We need that liquid to evaporate off the clothes. So in order for the laundry to be dry, we want to favor H2O gas. By favoring H2O gas, it's not going to be in a liquid form and it's not going to be on the clothes. So we basically want to favor the product side. So out of the equilibrium, remember, you have two possible ways that you want to drive the equation. You either can drive it to the left or you can drive it to the right. If we want that laundry to drive, we have to drive the reaction to the right. Now here comes the KP value. Now in part B of this question, we're at part D. In part B, we went over how we found this number. So if you need a refresher as to where this KP value came from, the equilibrium constant, just go back on the playlist to part B and that will be there. But now if I just link this up, to this balance equation, turns out that the K value is equal to, just like any K value, it's always equal to concentration of the products divided by the reactants. And if I look up my states, gases are allowed in the equilibrium constant and liquids are not. So in this case, the equilibrium constant will be equal to the partial pressure of the H2O. And there's only one of them, I raise it to the first because I only have one H2O here, so that doesn't really matter. But remember, the liquid doesn't get included in any K expression. So I could just put this over one, or I could just not say it at all. This is the link to the problem. We found out already that the K value, doesn't matter necessarily that it's a KP, but the K value is 3.13 times 10 to the negative two. But now if we know that the K value and the partial pressure are equal to each other, we now know where the cutoff is. The partial pressure has to be equal to 3.12 times 10 to the negative second. Now I'm going to just attach the ATM. But now here's the thing. This is at equilibrium. And remember what the term equilibrium means. Equilibrium means that the rates of the forward and the reverse reaction are the same. We, in this scenario for laundry to dry, we do not want these rates to be the same. We want to overpower the forward reaction. We don't want the reverse happening. 
So the rate of the forward one has to be much greater than the rate going backward. But now, how does that happen? Well, it's got to be a different value than this. Meaning, is it going to be higher than this? Or is it going to be lower than this value? So you got a 50-50 shot. But let's just make sure that we know the right one. This is where we talk about the Le Chatelier principle, or you could think of it in terms of K and Q values. Keep in mind that if you have a Q value, and it's like, I don't know, what time is it? Oh, it's, it's 12.03 a.m. and my dog's barking. That's lovely. But anyway, we got to keep going. <laughs> my neighbors love me. Q value on the right, K value on the left, right? What's going to happen if we want to favor the product side? So keep in mind that there is a little trick here. We make the assumptions, right? Maybe K is greater than Q or maybe K is less than Q. If you put the Q on the right side, make the arrow so that when you pull it back, you get the arrow that you want. You see how we want to produce a forward direction? So if I pull the arrow back, you see how it's the same direction? So we know that whatever we need, this pressure value has to be less than the K value. So in order for this laundry to dry, we know that the pressure of the H2O has to be less than the equilibrium pressure, which is 3.12 times 10 to the negative 2 ATM. Because anything less, you need to get it back, and you will go to the products. Anything more, you favor the opposite direction. So there is your answer. For all conditions in which the pressure of H2O in the air is less than 3.12 times 10 to the negative 2 ATM, your laundry is going to dry. But however, anything that's at equilibrium and above, it's going to be soaking wet. So hopefully you bring it inside. <laughs> anyway, I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Um, thank you so much for viewing the video. And I will be talking to you soon. All right. Have an awesome day. I'm going to get some sleep. Bye-bye.